One day she came in with a sweater cut from the neck all the way down to below the waist. Cut. And a safety pin about a foot long holding this garment together, but it was dripping off of one shoulder. And I looked at her back, and I thought to myself, she's going to do something someday. She was up in the morning, out the door, in class before everyone else, warming up. Uh, we'd go out dancing at night on the Saturday night, stay out very late. She'd be up early in the studio to warm up if she had a rehearsal in, on Sunday morning. I never could understand that. She was not easy on herself. She lived hard and, and, and worked very hard. She wanted to be a dancer. She wanted to go to New York and get in a good company. During her high school years, Madonna's dance teacher, Christopher Flynn, was tough on discipline and hard work. In 10th grade, Madonna studied jazz dance, but soon outgrew the class. A friend brought her here to the second floor studio of the Christopher Flynn Ballet School. What I remember most clearly about her from high school was that she was a better dancer than anyone in our school by far. And when she would start dancing at a school dance, people would just back away and watch her because nobody had ever seen anyone dance quite like that. The thing I believe that set Madonna apart from many of the other talented kids in school is that she worked longer and harder at her dance. She was the student who got in a car, drove 25 miles to Detroit. While other kids were maybe out goofing around, she was doing dance and practicing endless hours. I always thought she'd be a big dancer on Broadway with a major show. Christopher Flynn was Madonna's primary influence during her high school years. He was her dance teacher. This is a man who truly loved and cared. Story has it that Madonna used to go to some of the clubs in Detroit with Christopher Flynn, where she got exposed to a lot of different people, lifestyles, and got to see a variety of dance moves that were street. First time I saw Madonna, she was 16 years old. I was actually interviewing her ballet teacher to see if I wanted to bring him to the University of Michigan. So I went out to Rochester to his dance studio, and there were three students in the class, and Madonna was one of them. She was so beautiful and so live and so small, and her lines were gorgeous. I ended up hiring Christopher Flynn, who she adored. She was an excellent student, very disciplined. I remember her standing always in the front row. She got into many major dances that we did that would normally not even cast undergraduates, much less a freshman. One of the highlights for me was the duet that I made for her with Josh Cabot, which is a kind of male female confrontation, face-to-face. Uh, -face. It was sexual. She has to roll on him and be on her hands and confront him. She really, I think, uses all of her power that she had then to do it. She was very, very small. I bet she weighed less than 100 pounds. And so she didn't have a lot of power and strength. There's a softness and actually a vulnerability that's really beautiful that comes out. There's no question in my mind that she would have been a professional dancer if she wanted to have gone that route. She was very young. She was barely out of adolescence, plain little child. Uh, she had a doll that was oh, probably two, and two feet long, little girl doll, you know, a little dress and so forth, stuck under her arm, looked just like the most innocent child in the world. She had many qualities that young dancers desire. She was lean, she um, had a nice edge to her muscles, she was hungry, great appetite. She was sassy, she was kid-like, chewed gum and lived on Brock's butterscotch candies. She definitely was disciplined, hardworking, uh, a pleasure to be with. She was young, just a kid. She headed to New York and 
I hear she asked the first cab driver to take her to the middle of things or whatever, and he took her to Times Square. <laughs> Wonderful. That cab driver has a real sense of humor, that's all I can say. She had 70, 75 dollars, something like that, in her pocket. She had the doll under her arm, a little satchel of some sort. And I'm sure the most wide open, encompassing, vulnerable look in the world. I first encountered Madonna at the University of Michigan at a scholarship audition for the American Dance Festival. We had about 80 dancers, and I saw among the 80 this very thin, dark little girl pushing herself around, working very hard, and I thought, that's interesting, let's take her. Toward the end of the course, she said to me, do you think you're gonna need any dancers in New York? I said, Madonna, you've gotta go home to Michigan first, and how are you gonna to get to New York? And how are you gonna live there? She said, don't worry. She was young, and she was determined to do it right and well. November rolled around, and I was teaching a class, and the door opened, and there was Madonna. She had come. She lived in rat traps, survived by doing odd jobs. In November of 1978, Madonna auditioned for the highly respected Pearl Lang Dance Company. One day she came in with a t-shirt torn all the way down the back and an enormous safety pin. It must have been a foot long holding this together and it was dragged off of one shoulder. And I looked at it and I thought, if she doesn't take the eye out of her partner, she'll do something one day. I was fond of her for her arrogance and for her energy and for her spunk, for her, her, nothing fazed her. She was going to do something and nothing was going to be, get in her way. And I find that quite alarming and quite wonderful. Pearl Lang in America was sort of the heir apparent to Martha Graham, who was a very, very big legendary icon of American dance. Uh, Madonna, according to Pearl Lang, was her star dancer of that period. And she was exposed at Spoleto, which is almost the World Series of dance, a very big, big thing. I did get her a job because I thought she was losing weight, and I thought she needs one decent meal a day. And uh, I'm sorry to say, but I, I'm pretty sure that that was the one decent meal she was getting.